Hello and welcome everybody to my channel. As many of you know, we have had some success in raising some clownfish babies. In the tank you're looking at is our very first attempt at hatching clownfish babies, but it's been in our closet and it's got to move somewhere else. We do have a dedicated fish room in our basement, but some of it has been left, let's say, a little bit messy. But this is where we want to make our new clownfish hatching rack. The idea of this is to have everything at my fingertips that will be needed for raising baby clownfish. So I have adjusted the racks to the desired heights I would like. I would like to be able to fit my rotifers, two hatch tanks, and all my equipment that I have right here for raising baby clownfish. I've had to double up the plywood on the rack that the tanks are going to sit on as I don't think one piece was sturdy enough. On the bottom rack I'm going to keep my rotifers and copepods here. These are my culture systems for these. These are great foods and very necessary for raising baby clownfish. Now the copepods that are in the Home Depot bucket they started out in these plastic uh, pot bottles that I got from another hobbyist and these are just mixed copepods and rotifers which are great for the clownfish as they get bigger. These are quite large and my clownfish babies are at 21 days right now and these are a great food if you gut load them with some Rotogrow Plus or some type of uh, phytoplankton or algae for them to be gut loaded to give your baby clownfish some nutrition. In this bucket, these are my type L rotifers. These are the very first food for your clownfish baby. So this is why I want all this stuff right at the tip of my fingers. Uh, this is a heavily loaded bucket, but like I said, there is no alternative to their very first food other than this. I will do a video at a later date about uh, culturing rotifers and what you need to do and best practices that I've found for culturing rotifers. Now it's time to set the tank up. The tank has been totally, it's a 10 gallon tank and it's been totally blocked out with garbage bags wrapped all the way around so that no light can penetrate. On hatch night, if light penetrates, they will not hatch properly. So we want it completely blocked out. And what I've also done with this is uh, I've left it so that I can tape the front over, but I can very easily uh, pull back the plastic on the front so I can see in the tank when I do want to see into the tank. This is very important to keep the front of the tank enclosed as well because if they see shadows outside of the tank when they are young they'll smash their faces off the glass and whatnot and uh, damage themselves and you may end up with some uh, not quite as healthy baby clownfish. What we have also done is put a piece of plastic on the side of the rack. That door you see there is my 16 year old son's bedroom door and he's in and out slamming the door and I didn't want that disturbing the clownfish uh, while they're young larvae. What I've also done is put uh, a bar fridge here to keep my uh, rota for food in and brine shrimp eggs and whatnot. Uh, we also have our supplies there. This is That's our cleaning brush for the rotifers and a funnel. But all in all, we want it so everything fits on. So we have the tank in place. We've put some fresh, clean salt water in the tank. And we'll fill the rest of the tank up with uh, existing tank water from uh, where the eggs are coming from the main tank. Nothing more than an air bubbler, a heater, and there is a seasoned sponge filter sitting in there but with no power to it. I use a very dim LED light at the top of the tank as the young clownfish can be very sensitive to light. This light is very very dim and with the water greened it should not bother them at all. 
So here's our eggs. The eggs are inside a four inch terracotta pot. There are quite a few, probably a couple hundred eggs in there. It's very difficult to see with the video, but believe me, they're there. There they are. These eggs are being transferred from the main tank to the hatch tank. Hatch tank, water temperature is the same, water chemistry is the same, salinity is the same, everything is the same. As the main display tank where the parents laid the eggs, you do not want to shock the eggs at all. I don't move the eggs to the hatch tank until it is very close to hatch time. Right now we are about an hour before they are scheduled to hatch. I position the air bubbler, air stone, so that it causes a little bit of water movement over the eggs, but not too much, not enough to dislodge them or anything, just enough so that they lightly float around and uh, they don't become stagnant. The father and the mother, but mainly the father, does this so that the eggs don't become full of fungus. The method I choose in raising my clownfish larvae is having the rotifers, type L rotifers, ready for them. As soon as they hatch, they can start eating. So this means we have to harvest some rotifers and get them into the hatch tank. This is very easily done with a sieve. I believe it's a 42 micron sieve that I use. And I very simply put it in the bucket and just keep scooping. I do this, you know, between four and six times and I will put it into the tank and see what kind of density we have in the tank. Now, remember these rotifers are gut loaded with Rotogro Plus and RG Complete. As you can see there, that was quite a cloud of rotifers going into the tank, but still probably not enough. You need many, many, many per square inch as the clownfish larvae are really not that good of hunters at this point and pretty much just open and close their mouths hoping to catch something. So with this addition of rotifers here, this should make it so that they will be able to find food no matter what. The next step will be to tint the water green. This does a couple of things. This reduces the light intensity for the larvae and it also feeds the rotifers. Rotifers can only keep food in their gut for about an hour to an hour and a half. After that, their nutritional value is diminished. They are essentially a way to transfer nutrition to your babies. So I pour the RG Complete and Rotigro Plus mixture into the tank and swish it around with my hand. And I do this until I can barely see the heater in the back of the tank. I don't have this down to a scientific method. I do it just by looking and I can tell. Another benefit of this is that those rotifers will breed in this tank now. So the new baby larvae will have every different size option of type L rotifers that they so choose. If they want smaller baby ones, they can have them and there will be adult ones in there as well. All of them will be gut loaded and very, very nutritious for them. That is the proper tint right there. Now the next step is I put another piece of plastic right over top of the entire tank. The reason for this is to ensure that no light gets in the tank. I should add that there is a light on the heater in the tank and I have actually covered that up with a piece of electrical tape. Here is the bottle of RG Complete. This is what you'll need to feed your baby rotifers and tint your water. When I first look into my hatch tank after I figure that the babies have hatched, I use a red light to make sure. And we can see that everybody is hatched and all the rotifers are free swimming. So the red light is no longer necessary. This is at about 3 a.m. Metley, three hours after they hatched. Here they are at 6 a.m. Water is still tinted well. Rotifers are swimming great. I hope this video has helped everybody get started in the exciting world of hatching 
clownfish babies. Thank you for watching. Take care. See you next time. Bye for now.